In this video, we're going to talk about solubility, and in the New York State Chemistry Reference Tables, we're, ref uh, we're referring to uh, Table G, which is the solubility curve, and again, that's at standard pressure, and this is based on a solution that's set in 100 grams of water. Now, if you remember, the density of water, of course, is 1, so in theory, if I have 100 grams of water, I have 100 milliliters of water. So if you think about a beaker that's 100 milliliters big, uh, these are the amounts and samples that have been put in there and have been dissolved. And so this is in grams, so the grams of solute per 100 grams of uh, the solution are for the water. And sometimes the reagents will throw out and kind of stump you or trick you, and they'll ask you how much could be dissolved in a 50 gram sample. And all you have to do is find your answer here and then divide that in half, because of course 50 is half of 100. The other thing that they'll do is instead of cutting it in half, they may say, how much can dissolve in a 200 gram sample, which of course is a multiple, so it's finding the answer and then doubling it. So just be wary of those that come. Now, uh, this chart here, again, the same concept applies. I'm gonna pull off another one here on the side. I have a separate sheet that has less graphs on here to make it a little less overwhelming in the beginning. But we see there's a lot of graphs here and you need to really pay attention to make sure that you're using the correct curve because sometimes you see similar elements. So for example, you know, I see uh, potassium here and I see potassium there and I see potassium down here. So don't just see potassium because then there's another potassium up there too. You need to make sure you're using the correct uh, formula and you're on the correct curve. So we're gonna do some practice questions just to show you how to do this. And I have a, a simplified version of this and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see this pretty good and focus more on here and uh, if you're in my class of course you're going to have a link to see this page so you can see those questions if not you know hopefully you can read here but I want to kind of point out what's going on over here and so on this curve same concept table G just a little bit different over here we can see again solubility in grams per 100 grams of water so again that's like 100 milliliters of water and then we have our temperature so as we change our temperature in general for all four of these we see an increase now on the original table G that I showed or the official from New York State chemistry reference tables you see some that will decrease and often those are going to be gases but typically your solids will show a general increase but every one's a little bit different Sodium chloride is a very gradual increase, but for example, potassium nitrate has a very rapid increase, as does sodium chlorate. So we're gonna go through some questions, and I just wanna basically point out and show you how uh, to read table G. Now, a couple things I wanna point out. We, you know, in class, we learn about the term saturated. We learn about unsaturated. And we learn about supersaturated. Now, if we're talking about generally speaking, and this could be any curve, it doesn't matter what curve we're, de what, uh, we're dealing with here. If I have any point on a line, okay, it could be any one of these points, okay, point one, point two, point three, any point that's on a line is the maximum amount that can actually dissolve at that set temperature. So one, two, and three, are gonna all be the same. As I warm it up, I can dissolve more. As I cool it down, I can dissolve less. But all of those are the same. Those three, one, two, and three, would be super, uh, excuse me, would be saturated because they're actually on the curve. They're the maximum amount. Now, let's say I poured something in. Like, let's say you're at a restaurant, you get a tea and it's not very sweet, so you wanna put sugar in it, and you grab the packets of sugar, and the first packet does not go all the way and so number four here, I can dissolve a little bit more. I can put another one in. Let's say the next packet, and I dissolve the next packet. So number four and number five go in there, but then if I dissolve another packet, it just kinda stays at the bottom and it doesn't dissolve. So any point below the line, so saturated of course is on the line, unsaturated is gonna be below the line. So this would be you know four and five. And therefore, the only thing we're left with, if we've already been on the line, we've been below the line, the only other place we can talk about next, of course, would be above the line, and that's gonna be a supersaturated solution. And so, how that usually happens, I will have to heat it up. So if we go back to number three here, I can heat up a large amount at number three for a high temperature, but what happens sometimes, if I slowly let it cool, over time, the temperature drops 
but it's still holding an amount. So my number six, if I'm holding a certain amount here still, when it should be holding something right above this number five, that's what's known as a supersaturated solution, and you would have it above the curve. Now, this excess, this excess amount here has to come out of the solution because this is how much is there from the original warmer temperature, but when I cool down, it can only hold this much, and it's gonna fall out. And that often will fall out in the form of a crystal. And so if you've ever seen rock candy, rock candy is a perfect example. Uh, maybe you've done a borax crystal lab in uh, science class, or maybe even in, in younger classes or you know little home projects. Anything that again cannot be dissolved will have to come out of that solution. It can't stay in the, in the water as dissolved solute. And so again, it might settle to the bottom or it might come out and form crystals over time. So that's, that's again a good general review. I'm gonna go through some of these questions and again, show you how to interpret. A lot of it is just you know finding a temperature, going up to the chart and then reading over the amount of grams. Or you might be given the grams and you have to go over and see where it is on the chart and then read at what temperature you could dissolve it at. That's what a lot of it is, it's just basic graph reading skills but there may be questions like I had referenced up here you know let's say we dissolve at a certain amount and then we cool it to a certain temperature the question is how it's going to fall out or if I added some and it wasn't to the solution that's saturated yet how much more can I add okay so you get questions that reference those to make you think a little bit to use you know slight subtraction or you know some slight math skills and relatively it's just subtraction so let's take a look at the first one. It says, how much sodium chlorate is required to form a saturated solution at 55 degrees Celsius in 100 grams of water? And again, a lot of times, this 100 grams of water here for this part of the question is kind of like irrelevant in information be because we're using a scale that's 100 grams. Now, if this had said the 50 grams, then again, I have to pay attention. Whatever answer I get, I have to cut in half. If it said 200 grams of water, whatever answer I found, I'd have to double. Because again, this chart is based on 100 grams of water. These are the grams all the way up to 240 that can dissolve in 100 grams of water, but we're focusing on the 100 grams of water. So, sodium chlorate, at 55, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for sodium chlorate and we're looking for 55 degrees Celsius. So when I go over to 55 degrees Celsius in between of course 50 and 60, I wanna go up and find sodium chlorate. Now, don't confuse sodium chlorate with sodium chloride because we have both of them on the chart. We have a sodium material here and a sodium here. A lot of people wanna to come to this first one. They see sodium first, they start at 55, they go up, oh, there's my first sodium, and they think that's it, but in reality, we're gonna be at about 55 degrees right here. And we're gonna go, and again, it's halfway in between, so we're gonna estimate. And then we have to go up until we make connection with this point here. So we're somewhere right there. Okay, we're somewhere right there. So we wanna know how much is required to form a saturated solution. Remember, saturated is on the curve. So at 55 degrees, I go up until I get sodium chlorate, and then I estimate over. It may not be a perfect answer, but we wanna estimate as close as we can because again, there's gonna be a little range on how you view this. You know, you may view that that's exactly in between. So there will be a range in your answer. You know, maybe it's slightly below because I drew my dot a little bit bigger, but maybe it's slightly below that curve. So, you know, I might say 147, but I could also say up to 150. There's gonna be a range in your answer that we would accept. And so you can get credit for having uh, you know, multiple answers, again, within that range. If you were out of the range, likely you're not gonna get full credit. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, number two says, I have 20 grams of sodium chloride dissolved in 100 grams of water at 50 degrees Celsius. Will my solute be, and it should, that should say, you know, is that solution instead? Would it be unsaturated, supersaturated, uh, excuse me, saturated or supersaturated. So again, we have details here. Here's that extraneous information just to show you that we're using the standard, 100 grams of water. So really I gotta focus on the 20 grams of sodium chloride and 50 degrees Celsius. So now we are using that lower curve sodium chloride. So 50 degrees, I know I can go up to here, but the question says, if I have 20 grams dissolved. So at 50 degrees, if I go up to 20 grams, 
notice where that's located. That's under the curve. We have not gotten to the curve yet. I could actually add more. So there could be a secondary question that says, you know, how much more would I have to add to make it saturated? So because I'm under the curve, of course, I'm going to be unsaturated in this case. So at 50 degrees, what you want to get in the habit of is, is basically making notes of what can go on at those temperatures. So if we look at 50 degrees, go up to 50, you know, maybe that's about, you know, if we go over, it's below the 40 line, you know, 30 would be about here, you know, 35, maybe it's about 36 or 37. Maybe it's 36 or 37. I could add in, you know, if I only had 20, I could add in about 16 or 17 more. Okay, that's not what this question is asking. The question just wants to know, is it unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated? Because I'm under the curve, again, I'm gonna be unsaturated. All right, number three, what is the solubility of potassium nitrate? Again, here's 100 grams of water at 70 degrees. So I have potassium nitrate and 70 degrees. So I'm gonna go over to 70 degrees and I'm gonna to go to my potassium nitrate curve. Okay, my KNO3, again, make sure you're using the correct curve. We have potassium bromide and potassium nitrate here. So 70 degrees up, almost looks like it's halfway, and we'll call it halfway just for the sake of keeping things simple. It's halfway in between those two lines. So if we go across, we're at 130 grams of KNO3. Okay, 130 grams of KNO3. Number four, how much potassium bromide could I dissolve in a, to make a saturated solution 50 grams? Notice 50 grams of water. This one is where we need to pay attention. So now we're cutting the amount of water in half. That means because this is based on 100 grams, whatever answer I get here, I gotta cut in half because it's only half the amount. If I have twice as much water, I can dissolve twice as much stuff. Hopefully that makes sense. So potassium bromide at 90 degrees. So KBR, so we're gonna go KBR, potassium bromide, we're gonna to go to 90 degrees. Notice that's perfect, right where this 100 gram line lies. And that's 100 grams of potassium bromide, not 100 grams of water. Remember, this is all in 100 grams of water, but this is the amount of solute or salts and materials that you can dissolve in that 100 grams of water. So at 90 degrees, we're at 100. So normally this would be 100 grams, but because we're going to 50, we need to cut that in half. So again, basically 100 divided by two is 50 grams of KBR. Okay, we're just gonna cut it in half. Hopefully this is making sense. Again, it's a lot of just graph reading skills, finding temperatures, finding points. How much more can I add? How much would come out? Number five, what's the solubility of NaCl? Again, 100 grams, so we're back to standard. Add 100 degrees. So NaCl, we're gonna go over to 100 degrees and all the way up and it's finally hitting the point there. You could say it's just slightly under, but we could make an argument and just keep it for the sake of you know this, keep it simple. We're gonna call it 40 grams, okay? Uh, number six goes back to what we were talking about up here. It says if I have 60 grams of sodium chlorate have been dissolved in 100 grams at 20, how many more can I add to make it a saturated solution? So sodium chlorate at 20 degrees. Sodium chlorate at 20 degrees. So if we're at 20 degrees over here and we go to sodium chlorate, notice 20 degrees at sodium chlorate. I know this is a fainter line, but right here is that 20 degrees point with sodium chlorate and that's 100. So I know I can do 100. So when we come back and we look at this, I know I can have 100 grams at 20 degrees Celsius, but the question says 60 were already added. How much more can I make? How much more? So if I'm only at 60 KBR, if I'm only at 60, I'm at this point right here, I can go up to this. So basically it's just taking the difference. I can go up to 80 and then up to 100. I can go up basically 100 minus 60, simple math. I can go up and I can add 40 more grams. Hopefully that one made sense and that was clear as well. Again, if these don't make sense, go back and rewatch each one. Go back and rewatch and, and you know, you know, a couple times if you have to, and see what I'm pointing out, what I'm highlighting, and where I'm getting the numbers from. Number seven, at what temperature can I dissolve 130 grams potassium nitrate to make it saturated solution? So now we're going the opposite direction. And in the others, a lot of the others, I, you know, we were looking at temperatures first to figure out where we were. 
But now I'm giving you a gram uh, first. I know we gave grams here too, but we needed to know how much it could can dissolve at that temperature. This one, there's no temperature at all in the question where the others all had temperatures in them. So at what temperature can I dissolve 130 grams of potassium nitrate to make it saturated? So potassium nitrate, 130. I have to find 130 on my chart in between 120 and 140. And then halfway, if I go to potassium nitrate, there we are, we're right in between. We're gonna go down and it's gonna be 70 degrees. Okay, 70 degrees. Now, if you were paying attention, this is actually the reverse of the question that we did up here. Okay, 130 grams potassium nitrate. We wanted to know potassium nitrate at 70. It's basically the reverse, just two different ways you can ask the same question. So you do have to be careful when you're doing that. All right, number eight. I have a 200 gram sodium chlorate dissolved in 100 grams. Again, we're at standard, about 86 uh, Fahrenheit. If, uh, excuse me, Celsius, excuse me. If I were to cool this down to 35, how much would this precipitate or how much would precipitate out? So we need to find sodium chlorate at 86 degrees. Okay, 86 degrees, a little bit half, up to sodium chlorate. And for, again, for the case of this sake of the simple math, roughly 86 is about right here, right where it's crossing. So it's gonna be relatively easy to look at. So at that temperature, so at 86 degrees, notice I'm gonna put a little note here, at 86 degrees, it can dissolve 200. That's what I know I can dissolve at 86 degrees. But the question says it cools down to 35. It cools down to 35, how much is gonna fall out? So we have to go back down to 35 degrees. Sorry, we're going off the chart here. 35 degrees, and I'm gonna go up to potassium nitrate again, or, or excuse me, sodium chlorate, make sure we're on the right curve. Now, again, it's an easy value. It's right where it crosses the line. We're at 120. So I know I can do 120 grams at that temperature. So I have my two different values. If I cool out, it cannot hold the solution any longer. And so basically it's just 200 minus 120 equals 80 grams are gonna come out of the solution. And that's what would be on the bottom of the container. Or if you had a crystal that formed, let's say you had a stick in there, rock candy, for example, would do this you'd have 80 grams of crystals around that material. Uh, number nine, you'll often get questions about where two things have the same solubility. So you just have to find them and see where they cross. So where are potassium nitrate and potassium bromide the same? So basically if we look for potassium, our two potassium values, there's our two potassium charts, where they cross is right here. Okay, this one is going this way, this one's coming down this way. They have the same solubility at 50 degrees. They can both dissolve about 80. Okay, so at 50 degrees, the question says at which temperature? So this would be 50 degrees Celsius is where those both cross. And then finally, something like this, which one is the least soluble? You might get which one is the most soluble at 20 degrees. So which one is the least soluble? Meaning it can hold the least amount of material in it or which one is the lowest number? So if we go to 20 degrees, over 20 degrees, it's basically the one that I get to first. Okay, the one I get to first is this point right here, and that's gonna be, again, make sure you're on the right chart. Don't, don't read over and become NACL. This is the solid black line, that's the KNO3. So KNO3, if the question said, what is the most soluble at 20 degrees, we would have gone all the way up to the top and wrote NACLO3. Okay, this would be the most soluble at 20 degrees. This is, uh, excuse me, this one is the most soluble at 20 degrees. This one is the least soluble at 20 degrees. So hopefully this has made sense using table G. Again, a lot of it is just graphing skills. Make sure you mark up. Notice I was drawing dots and drawing points. Do that, draw all over your chart when you have that ability. If you're getting ready and you're seeing this before the Regents exam, you're gonna get a brand new fresh reference table on the day of the Regents exam. If you have a Regents exam, or your final exam, for example, and you have the ability to write on it. So write all over it and make sure you are at the right points, at the right temperatures, the right amount of you know water, right grams and things like that. So uh, I look forward to seeing your success with table G and solutions. If you have any questions, just leave them below. Thanks.